Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Thirsty Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to be speaking about the power of community and networking, not TCPIP network, networking in general with other folks. So if you guys are tuning in, if you have any questions like normal, just throw it in the chat and I'll get to it when I can. I'm all by myself today, so I don't have a little person to uh, look out for my chat. So, and uh, yeah, so today we have Simon from InfoSec Live. And I'm going to bring him in and he can uh, give you guys the intro. I didn't know I had to do my own intro. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Pat, how are you? Good, good, good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, firstly, thanks. Thanks for inviting <clears throat> me on. It's nice to be um it's nice to be the other side of the of the desk, as it were, for one of these. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, no, most definitely. And I, you know, I remember, you know, when I was on that side doing a little you know, little gadget hacking and talking about all the fun things you can do with the little flipper. Yeah. And um, obviously, a lot of you guys probably know Simon from InfoSec Live, doing a lot of uh, talks for with CISOs and just a whole bunch of cool talks and, and with the community and everything like that. That's what obviously what today's topic is going to be about, uh, talking about the power of community, right? So maybe some people may not know Simon because he's, you know, not doing hacking videos. So who is Simon? And... Yeah, give it a little breakdown and who you are. Oh, we've only got 45 minutes and I am 50 this year, so I'm going to have to keep this quite brief. Um, yeah, as Pat said, my name's Simon. I'm the founder of the InfoSec Live community. I founded the community back in June 2021 when I decided at 46 years old that I was going to come from 25 years in financial services and professional sales to follow my lifelong dream of uh, or my lifelong passion should i say which was technology and in particular the darker side of it being hacking and wanting to be a hacker so i very misguidedly tried to come into the come into the industry without doing all the fundamental stuff that's super important and it finished with me failing my oscp at the back end of 2020 pretty badly which made me realize that i had some serious gaps in my knowledge, I knew absolutely no one in the industry at all. Uh, managed to come in as head of sales for a penetration testing company, which got my foot in the door, which was early part of uh, 2021. And during that six month contract, I spoke to dozens of people from CISOs down to people trying to break in, a lot of whom were struggling with finding a community or communicating with people in general and honing their soft skills. So I threw up a community platform one afternoon uh, refitted a site that we built out for my wife for her business that she'd stopped working once I'd started working again in the industry and um, that no intention other than to try and help people and bring people together a bit and yeah we're now up to I think 6,000 members globally um, we've helped hundreds of people get jobs we provide tons of free mini courses we've got relationships with a number of uh, training partners and vendors now offering discounts on services and off the back of that, we launched in February 2023, a CISO series of in-person events, um, which came off the back of the YouTube channel that I host a series called the CISO Experience on InfoSec Live. And we've now done, I think, 10 events across the UK and US. They've gone down fantastically well. And this year we've just signed or about to sign, so I can't really say the name, a pretty big contract with a rather well-known um, community hacking firm for a series of events across the UK and US. So yeah, busy, busy times ahead. Nice, nice. And that is definitely super intriguing. And I appreciate it. I remember when we, you know, first started linking up talking about that, you would tell me about your experience about failing the OSCP. I think if I would have failed it, I would have probably did the same thing, right? I would be like, F this, let's just fucking keep it moving, right? I'm not gonna spend $1,300 again on an exam. Well, I, I think for me, it was, um, it was quite misguided to ever book it in the first place. Mm -hmm. because I'd come in whilst I've always loved tech. And even when I had had my own firm with my own staff <clears> and my own <throat> MSP who came in, it was mm -hmm. still me with my hands on the keyboards because I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I think I thought I knew a lot more than I did. Absolutely. So I did a lot of A plus, bit of sec plus, Mr. Mr. Network Net Plus completely <laughs> just went straight into our CP. But again, we were we were chatting about this before we went live. Mm -hmm. It's so important to have those right people around you to help you make those decisions. And when you haven't, 
it's very difficult to do that. And you sometimes learn in a very expensive and soul destroying way. <laughs> exactly. And that's what's pretty much what we're going to be talking about tonight, right? So that, that, that would, that's a good way to segue into tonight's topic, right? So, you know, if anyone is studying for whatever, if it's OSCP, even A plus, Network plus, Security plus, OSCP, PMPT, PJ, you know, all the acronyms behind your name, the importance is don't do it alone. <clears throat> like if you can join a community, a Discord server, or a, a you know, whatever, Telegram, I'm just kidding. But, you know, like, you, you know, do some kind of networking because for an example, like I remember studying for CCNA, CCMP, C you know, all those certifications. And I didn't have no one to do it with. Like it was me, CBT Nuggets and myself, right? And the first time I found the community, it wasn't really the community, but it was a couple of people that were interested in the PC NSE for Palo Alto. And that's how I started my YouTube channel, right? That was my first video on YouTube was how to set up Palo Alto and VMware Workstation. The reason being is because I had, was it four of us, three or four of us that we were studying for the P, uh, PC NSE. And then like, we would all do a topic on the syllabus. So if there's a syllabus and there's a topic and a sub or, or yeah, subtopic or whatever, like, Simon would be doing IPsec tunneling. I'll be doing site-to-site -site VPNs. And Kev would be doing this, so, or Sam will be doing that. Whoever wants to study, or whoever's in the group, we study and we test each other every week on that topic that you're responsible for. So that's how I did it. And same thing with, for InfoSec, right? Maybe I'm good at AD hacking and you're good at Privesk, just like we were talking about. And then we can exchange that information and really learn from each other. And I think that's what the 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 beautiness of this community and i didn't really get that in the the networking that you know the tcp ip networking and system admin everyone was so fucking selfish it was like you know this is my domain this is my thing and now if i got that i'll just fucking you know dump your hash out of your you know in, in this I've, I've never i've got to be honest i've never experienced an industry that's so welcoming and mm -hmm. so prepared to bend over backwards and help and there's no way on earth that infosec live would ever have grown if it wasn't for that because the community is a, a made up of lots of different people's contributions and for it to work lots of different people have to contribute and i think if you put a similar community in another industry like financial services it just wouldn't work mm -hmm. yeah and, and that's so true so that's what like the beauty of community is. So for someone brand new, right? What is the importance of having a community behind you to be successful in your words? Like, what does that mean to you? I think that there's, there's so much to that. Before I dig into that though, I've seen that Itza is, who's one of the biggest contributors to the InfoSec Live community is in your chat. So I just don't want to do a big oh, shout yeah. out to Itza and say thanks for everything that you do while we're here. Um, community for me did, lots of things i think going back to what i said at the start i didn't really know anyone i didn't know anyone at all when i studied and started trying to break into this industry and the one thing building a community did for me is give me that sense of belonging mm. and i think post pandemic social connection hasn't been particularly easily to find mm -hmm. for everyone but a place like infosec live or a place like your community or jerry's community or any any number of the others out there they give you that sense of belonging and connection with others. And whether you're studying for that first exam or just flunked an interview for your dream job, or you're preparing a board presentation, there's a sense that you're not alone with it. And I think for me, I spent a lot of my life being very selfish and very driven to succeed for myself. Mm -hmm. And it was only, I'm not going to go into my history, but it was only through some adversity that was self caused a mm -hmm. number of years ago that made me realize that being around other people and helping people really is the best medicine for life and makes you feel good so there's that part of it as well um another thing for anyone considering it the diversity of a community the strength in diversity is massive i mean you look at infosec live six thousand people from all over the world all with different life experiences different backgrounds so when you're pursuing activities by yourself 
it's different when you've got a group of diverse people around you who each and every one of them then add to that overall education and, and friendship experience. And the other part, I suppose, is if you're studying on your own, you've got no accountability either. But if you're a part of a community, you've got that accountability. You know, if you've got study groups that you go into or if you set the goals publicly, it's no different, is it, to writing something down that you want to achieve. If you're saying it out loud and telling other people, you're more likely to achieve it. Um, another one is fun. It's quite enjoyable. I've never had so much fun as I have um, with InfoSec Live over the past three years. It might show you that my life's been pretty dull up until that point. But <laughs> I genuinely mean it. I've had a smile on my face more the last few years than I ever have. And because of that, I suppose, or the reason for that is the, the final bit, which for me is the crucial part, is the support and friendship you get mm -hmm. in the community. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I can't agree more, right? I think the same exact thing, because if you're alone, you know, if you're in something alone, you're going to feel like isolated and feel like, oh, fuck, like, I'm not going to be able to do this. At least like, but do, I, I guess th there's two ways to think about this, right? Like I used to be like, oh, I don't want to put my business out there because I don't want to feel like I'm flaunting. Like oh, I'm studying for this and I got this and this and this yeah. and that. So until like I took a step back and I was like, you know what? Like, it's not about flaunting my shit. It's not about like showing off. It's about just like someone saying, yo, like you're studying for, for, them, for whatever PMPT. Where are you at in that studying? You know, like, where are you at there? I'm like, oh, fuck, I've been slacking. All right, get your ass up. And it's, it's about sharing, isn't it? Yeah. Sharing. Exactly. So, and, and that's what like the, you know, the few little people, like I was saying off air, like, the few little people that I have behind me doing like the PMPT, PJPT. And I may not even, I want to take the exam and I want to be honest. I'll say that shit live. You know what I mean? Like I want to take the exam, but I think more importantly is like the knowledge behind what, you know, Heath Adams is providing and his team, like whoever's, you know, for whatever part you're studying, it's like, okay, like learn that as long as you can deliver those tasks. I think that's important. Especially if you're going for that job, and and <clears throat> it's because some people are like, oh, I don't want to get a cert. I just use this, and this is what I do. I, I don't get a cert for everything I'm learning. I'll use it more as a reference. Like, oh shit, like I'm going to be going on an assessment and engagement about API hacking, right? For an example, I don't do API hacking, right? So I'm like, oh, now I can go to you know API Sec University, right? Oh, I can do study Alex's thing from TCM, whatever, and like, okay, I can brush up on this little piece because I suck at it, you know? <clears throat> so you can always use it as a reference it's, it's as quite, well. It's quite a relevant point. So my 18 year old son, Sonny, he's landed a job in cybersecurity straight from school um, at Aviva, the mm. big insurer over here in the UK. <clears throat> and he's doing quite a structured apprenticeship program and they're using a lot of the material from SEC plus and net plus, but mm -hmm. they're not doing the exam. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the coursework. So they're using it to learn, mm -hmm. but they don't get a certificate at the end of it, which I suppose in a way surprised me. But then do you need the certificate if you've learned the knowledge and you can demonstrate you can apply it in a work environment? I suppose from the employer's <coughs> point of view, mm -hmm. they don't care if they've got the cert as long as they know they've actually had the training because it's a different situation to bringing someone in off the street to hit the ground running, isn't it? Where you exactly. To find out if someone's qualified and competent. So exactly. Quite, quite interesting. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. And and that's same thing with me. Like if I'm studying, right? Like if I'm studying, I'm not always going to get the cert, uh, <clears throat> especially as I'm growing, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm getting older, like <clears throat> shit, I'm dying. But like, don't die. <laughs> everyone will <laughs> witness I'm, I drop and drop dead. <clears throat> but uh, so like, this was my old, you know, sort of like my old advice and sort of like my still my, I might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like the, the old thing I used to tell people is like the reason why I got so many certifications is because if I'm going to learn something, I'm going to be, you know, reinforced for what I'm learning. If I'm going to go study VMware, if I'm doing it on, on a daily, I'm just touching Visa, blah, blah, blah. Why not go take VCP or whatever the case may be, you know? If I want to do Cisco routing switching every day, why not? It's like going to med school without taking your boards, right? Yeah. So, but now I have a different, 
different outlook, you know, you know, 20 years later. And it's like, it's, it's not about the piece of paper, you know, and for, for some, it may be right. Because you have to have the experience to get the job, but then you need a job to get the experience and then blah, 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 blah. And I posted something on my Instagram about that this morning. Like it was a little interesting thing. It's like, you know, you go to an interview, you're 19 to like your son, right? Sonny. Okay. He's 18 years old. You know, he's learning about uh, net plus, sys, uh, sec plus, et cetera, but he doesn't have the hands-on experience. So when he goes to a job, it's like, what experience do you have? It's like, okay, it's a catch 22. It's like, what the fuck? You, how am I going to do it? So that's why the community is important because maybe someone went down your avenue and you can convey with them and share your abilities, your knowledge and your goals, right? Your path. And now that's why I'm like today, it's like, okay, you can go study for like sec plus network plus we'll stay on that in a second. And then just gather the information, go to, you know, you don't really need to spend the money on the exam as long as you can convey to me, what is the CIE triad? What is routing, basic routing or whatever? What is the IP address of your local machine? What is the command? You know, like those basics. And I think that should be good enough. Um, and if anyone listening has any input, I would love to hear it. Um, well, so. Eric, Eric's made a couple of good comments, actually, although we're seeing your true colors, Eric, I think from the second one. So he said, friendly competition within your community is nice too. really gets you through those days when you know your friend's going to pass you up. And I agree with Eric. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, and I think I know you well enough to say that you're also quite competitive, Pat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 and then and then Eric also said, and I can't let my friend pass me up on my try hack me rank. So Eric's clearly as competitive as we are, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and my try hack me rank sucks. I think I'm at like 98 days now. Um, I remember when I was doing my OSCP, I had like 580 days, right? And I think I went to New York. I don't know what the fuck happened. I, I went out of town and I didn't know. You know, that's when I was like, I wasn't really paying attention and I wasn't so much involved in the community, right? Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, like I went, to, I think I went to New York, whatever. I did something. And then when I fucking got back home, I logged in and I had zero. I was like, and I didn't know. I thought that was like how many days you have. You know what I mean? I didn't know like it was like in a row. And I guess I was just doing it in a row because I was learning. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Yesterday I was at like 580 something now today or four or five days later. I was at, and now, you, you know, like you can actually email them now. Like if something gets whacked, you can email them. They can change your fucking ranking or they can reset it or whatever. But, um, when, you know, did, you, when did Try Hack Me come out? Because I don't think when I was doing my OSCP study, it was very well known because I, I jumped straight into Hack the Box, which yeah. I so, think at the time was probably a step too far for me. Exactly. Exactly. I think try hack me. This was like, cause I think the OSCP in 2019. So I think it was still, still fresh. I had to like actually hack my way into the, uh, actually I'm going to reveal it now. I'll be, uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't first here folks. Yeah. I, I didn't hack my way into <laughs> hack the box. Thanks, actually, if, if you just, uh, if you just go to like back then you hack the box.com slash i think r slash register and bada bing you got your you got your flight to get in <laughs> that was a little thing and i actually accidentally did that because i was i don't remember what <laughs> i was, accidentally I, did that come on yeah yeah because i was like right clicking doing the java thing and i i don't know what i did and i hit something as a like, congratulation i looked at the url it said like hack the box slash something slash register i was like all i had to do is type register and I didn't have to do all this fucking knocking my head in, but, uh, I guess it was a little bug and I guess I'm probably not the first one to see that. Probably everyone was doing it, but I found it. And, and I take it from the fact that you're revealing this now that you're not still exploiting that system. <laughs> <laughs> no. He is, isn't he? he Accident is. Accidentally. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Um, Wesley made a comment as well, going back to the, the certificates that someone years ago told them that when they said they didn't have the money for the certs, the information is more valuable than the paper, which I think reinforces everything you've just said. Yes, absolutely, Wes. Yeah, I think exactly. And I, I think now 
the certifications, like, like if you're working at a place and they're going to uh, pay for your cert, that's cool. But like, I think if you have to come out of pocket and if you're not in the industry, I guess it's a catch 22, another one, right? Because you need the cert to maybe like the gatekeeper to get into the door. Yeah. But at, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, you want to get some kind of gatekeeper. So, you know, it's like, uh, like I said, catch 22. Sometimes you have to do what you got to do to get into the door. Um, but once you're in your well, door, we, you we don't... Just, we've just heard that. We've hacked the box, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I it's, didn't have... It's just said a happy little accident, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely an accident. And it's funny. I wonder if it's like on Reddit and shit, like old school, like, like you know, Reddit post from like, I think that was in what? Yeah, 2018, 2019. Um, if anyone else had that, uh, heard of that hack too, let, let me know. Hopefully Hack the Box is not watching. Um, but <laughs> That's that sponsorship out the window, isn't it? <laughs> Um, Eric's mentioned that Western governors are, are doing it right. Cyber sec degree, you leave with 12 certs and a bachelor's. Exactly. I can, I can see why you were sold on that. And you say degrees won't get you jobs, Eric. I don't know. I mean, I'm based in the UK. I spend a lot of time in the US. But over here, degrees mean an awful lot when it comes to getting into the industry, rightly or wrongly. I mean, I've got my own opinions on mm -hmm. that, seeing as I was kicked out of school at 15 and didn't go to university. <laughs> yeah. Let's not talk about that. Though. Another happy little accident there. Exactly. And, and that's why, like, you know, Eric, that's why I went to WGU, right? Because when I was studying, obviously, like this was years ago, 2014, I graduated. And, you, you know, like back then they had like the C, that's why I have a few of those certifications. There's a C, uh, CEHC, CHFI, ECSA, LPT, uh, SSCP and CISSP and then like the project plus and, and all those, stuff. but I already had those certifications before I went into the program. So I got exempted from them, but yeah, that's the one good thing about WGU. They did do that, right? It's not like high school on steroids. Um, it's, it's Cause, pretty, cause let's be honest, our, our education systems, both in the UK and the U S are still based on the systems that were put in place during the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And I think we'd all agree. I mean, I've got six children at different ages. My oldest is 24 and our youngest are five-year-old twins. So I've seen sort of the whole spectrum when it comes to education. And we're not being prepared for real life mm -hmm. in the current education system. And I think that spills over, doesn't it, into the mm -hmm. further education mm -hmm. system as well. And for me, bringing it back to the community point, you go from studying on your own to studying in a community is more of a hands-on environment where I think you're more likely to learn and retain knowledge as well. Exactly. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, this is what I want to, sh I want to show this Rockefeller set system. That's exactly what it is. You know, um, that's really, really true. Wes, uh, my next yeah, class at WG yeah. SSCP or, oh, uh, SSCP and I'm excited to do that outside of country room. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. That that's, that's awesome. You know, uh, SSCP is definitely, I like that class. I like that exam better than a CISSP. And, what, CISSP. and what is SSCP for uh, the layman in the room here? Yeah. So that's a system, a security system certified practitioner or something like, I, I don't, I forgot what even it stands for. Uh, if you could put it in there, I, I forget. Sounds right what, though. Sounds right. Sec, uh, security system. I don't even know. Certified practitioner or something like that. Yeah. Um, it says anyway. asked a comment about Western governors. He says, "Have actual do actual teachers lead you, or is it all self learning?" There's, at least when I did it, it was a lot more self learning, and you still have your cohort, you still have your your people that you have class with, and you submit your lectures. Yeah, systems security certified practitioner. I was close. I took that exam in 2015, so it was almost ten years ago. And um, you did you did very well then, I think. <laughs> I can't remember what I did last week. Never mind. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. Sometimes I forget which certs I have because I I've, I've taken so many, and I'm, like I said, I I don't like to be that person that's bragging. That's why I don't really talk about a lot of my successes. 
Um, you know, but the certifications were definitely something I, I, I'm proud of. Um, and the reason why I'm proud of it, and this is another thing we can talk about in the community as well is people with learning disabilities. Right. And, and, and I want to, I want to talk about this because obviously I don't talk about this on other streams because it's more about hacking. How'd you get into hacking all this stuff, but this is about community and linking up with folks and, and, and helping others. Right. And people with learning disabilities, it's, you're not alone either, right? It's like you have a way and, you know, we all learn differently. And I'm saying that because I have a learning disability, right? Like, and look at me, I'm pretty, pretty, I think I'm pretty successful. And I like to say that I, I don't talk openly about that, but I do. And it's like, we can be successful too. Not, we don't all have to be geniuses to be in this field or in any field at that. As long as you have a passion and you want to learn, you can do it, right? So I think di diversity is, is one of the things that feeds the industry and also is very lacking. We need more of it in mm -hmm. the industry and, and it's diversity of thought that we need more of. And people with learning difficulties or people like myself who've got ADHD or mm -hmm. autism, mm -hmm. yeah, bring something different to the table and it's it's learning to identify the strengths in those situations isn't it and applying mm -hmm. yourself to those and being surrounded by the right people who are going to encourage you and give you the support that you need and as you rightly say that's everything that a community should be there for exactly exactly so i'm just saying it i'm just bringing it out there and yeah you, you only limited yourself you can do anything yeah, you put your mind to absolutely, and, and, Caitlin. and that's so true because you know, I was raised in New York, you know, as probably people know about from my accent, like, and they can be harsh. You know what I mean? Yeah. People can be fucking assholes, you know? The only, the only time I've been to New York was five weeks ago, and I spent <laughs> five hours waiting for a flight at JFK. <laughs> and I've got to be honest with you, out of all the places I've been in the US, there was far more rude, aggressive people in that airport than there was in Austin <laughs> five hours before. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is true, you know, and it's, <clears throat> and I guess like growing up in it, you know, it's like, this is the norm, you know, yeah. we don't say, please, we don't say, thank you. We don't hold the door for you. You know what I mean? We say move instead of excuse. Like there's just ways that we talk that, you know, it's the norm when you're in it, but when you're out of it and you go back home, it's like, That's yo, he's rude. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> and it happened to me two weeks ago. You know what I mean? It happened to me two weeks ago. Like. I was in New York for, for a hockey game and I went to my uncle's house and we went to like to get a, uh, a bagel from the bagel store and Jay went in, my, my uncle went in first and I held the door for this, this fucking guy. And he just walked in like, you know, strong, like, I'm like, yo, you're welcome. And he looked at me like I fucking had 10 heads. <laughs> I'm like, man, I, I I've been out of here that long. Like this is how it, you know, this is how these fucking, these people are, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking what, you know, I still probably have that embedded, but I have a lot more manners now, but I still have my, my New York mentality. It's, 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 it's hard to get rid of it, isn't it? I mean, I spent a lot of time in, in London when I was mm -hmm. younger and I go back there now and whilst people aren't as aggressive, people are fucking rude. Yeah. Um, you know, you go on the, the tube or you call it yeah, the subway. Yeah, subway, yep. No, no one's making eye contact. You know, if you look at someone, you're going to get shanked um, <laughs> in, in the car. And Whereas I'm like holding doors open for people. Oh, hi, come in. You know, and people yeah. are looking at you like you're mental. It's like yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, it boils down to just be kind to others because you never know if someone's struggling for whatever, mental health, learning disabilities, Whatever the case may be, just fucking, just be nice and just. And you that's don't, it. you don't know what sort of day people have had either. Mm -hmm. You know, any anything could have happened to people to make them react the way they do. And I think historically, when I was, I say younger, probably only as far back as five or six years ago, it was very easy for me to fly off the handle and not see other people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting old or whether it's because I. I caused my life to be re-leveled out a few years ago and actually realized what was important. But I think, again, going back to this industry, there's so many people who display genuine kindness 
Mm -hmm. and the ability to help others i've been blown away by it i really have absolutely absolutely let's see you uh you realize what you're valuing it, it, it says writing down places she won't go on vacation yeah new, new, i mean my wife did say take me to new york after my airport experience i'm not convinced although i did promise kev tech that i'd come over and meet him for pizza so yeah i might yeah, have I see a bodyguard with me that's my twins <laughs> five-year-olds you don't want to come near them they're ferocious <laughs> yeah yeah i seen kevin two weeks ago when i was in new york um because he lives near my old neighborhood um so I saw him. We got it was freezing up there. Don't go in the winter. It's, it's fucking bricks. It's cold, like, it's cold enough here in the UK all year round. It was like twenty degrees Fahrenheit. So is that in English? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know either. <laughs> um, twenty degrees. Let's see. Twenty degrees. From twenty degrees Celsius. There we go. Oh, minus six. Boom. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not it, that cold here. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cold. Um, let's see. So we have Scott. Uh, let's see. Let's put his thing up here. Hey there, Greens in Scotland. Just oh, Scotland. Working nice. environment in another box. Here, check out. I used to work in Edinburgh. Storm. Um, beautiful place. Just a little, so, little tidbit there for you. Yeah. So I guess I can take that. Um, first time thank you so much for joining first of all uh you actually benefits from versus or just check by so i think i Good think question yeah do you actually been so i guess like working in the industry you don't really need the certs if you really are in the industry if you have you know if you want to say you got lucky and got your foot in the door if you know someone or whatever that's the beauty of networking but if you haven't gotten a door yet, you need to get that cert in order to even skim through the system when you submit your resume or your CV, you know, and then now with all this AI, you may have, you know, they may be asking for security plus, you know, and, you know, if you don't have the security plus, your, your resume will just be dismissed and, you know, bugger off, you know, better luck next time. So I think, I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier as well about how you learn. Mm -hmm. because for me, I don't learn very well by picking up a book mm -hmm. and reading it and doing a multiple choice test at the end. For me, I might find that very difficult to then apply that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's other people I know who can read a book and apply that knowledge. So I suppose if you're looking at it from a, does it benefit you in a working environment point of view? It depends how you learn. I would have, I would have thought. Mm -hmm. No, fair enough. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, yeah, I enjoy reading. Um, sometimes like I enjoy reading, would I like reading? Don't give me no book that, you know, doesn't really make sense to me because I won't even understand it, you know? Um, but like some hacking books, like I have hacking books back there. Um, and I like to bring them on, like if I'm traveling and, and as reference, like an, another thing as reference, yeah, we can, we have Google and all that, but like, I like to read some stuff, but I learn better with watching videos and then practicing. Yeah. Um, that's so, definitely it's something about a book though, isn't there? Yeah. The actual book. Yeah, it's yeah. not my book, by the way. It's Greg Van der Gaas. It's just the nearest one I had to hand. But, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know. I have all my books. I was over just there. proving that I do read books. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very well read here. Very well. Exactly. Read. Exactly. Let's see. Some some employees offer a baseline salary increase. Yeah. Exactly. Eric has a good point. Like, so if you don't have the cert, you know, you may not, you know, be qual. So. Usually that's why there's ranges of salaries, right? Maybe you have 80,000 to 100,000, for example. And maybe to, to get that 80,000, or excuse me, to get like maybe 90 to 100,000, you may have to get maybe 60 to 70% of their check marks. Maybe the 100,000, which you're never going to check every single mark. I don't think ever in my life, in like a job description, <clears throat> I knew every single thing till today, right? Like if there's, I remember... I think the closest was when I was like a sysadmin or system engineer, when they had like VMware server, blah, blah, blah. And the only thing I didn't know was like Zen app servers, which was from Citrix. And then I went and I got my CCA, Citrix certified administrator. And I learned about Zen apps and Zen servers and all that stuff. But um, that's what, going back to what I was saying, uh, if I'm going to learn it, I'm going to go get the cert. And that's more of my mentality about 15 years ago, not today. Like I'm not going to, okay, I need to learn about web apps and I want to go get, you know, Burp Suite certified. You know, I'm not, I'm not, or 
I'm but then, you know, as, as, as you said, you're at a point in your career where you're quite senior now. You've accumulated all those certificates. Mm -hmm. But for people, people who just come into the industry or looking to break into the industry, those certs can be the key to unlock that door. And just to cover off the salaries there, Storm, um, we're based in the UK. So if you're looking at entry level, the, the figures Pat was just talking about are probably double what you and I can expect to get for a job. The salaries here, Pat, compared to in the US, I mean, for an experienced penetration tester, two to three years experience, you're looking at 60,000 a year. 60,000 pounds. So that's like, what, 70,000 US? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. What's that, half? If yeah. Not more? Yeah. Yeah. Because here, like, if you like three years of pen test, you probably make like a buck twenty. Yeah, you know, which is which is right. Um, I mean, yeah. you look at at the high level, the leadership level, CISOs. Um, I've got a lot of CISOs in my network, and we talk about salary ranges. And the ones in the UK, hold on, my headphones just come off. The ones in the UK um, are on about a third of the ones in the US. Hmm. Damn. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Can you hear me? I can I can hear you. I'm just wondering if it's going to connect back up because you'll probably hear yourself if I don't. Yeah, yeah, it. a little bit. Yeah, okay, it's cool. Annoying, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me, dude. Like I always have like problems with like my sound. Every time I go live, something like one day I think I went live with, uh, I think it was Aaron or someone. Like I hit go live and like all of a sudden like things started playing and like this is why I use this now because I don't trust my my speakers on my. My monitor. I, I just want to bring up this comment from Itza because she's just put a message to you there, Pat, saying, just so you know, I really appreciate your teaching style. I admittedly have only been following you since Try Hack Me Holiday event, but I've already learned so much from you. Mm. What a lovely comment. Cheers. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and that goes back to, you know, my learning disability, right? And, and I try to teach the same way I'll learn it, right? Because for an example, like, I've watched like Ipsec, great guy, lovely, super smart, but this dude goes on fucking, I don't even understand when he's doing it. Like I'm lost. <laughs> like I, like I've watched a couple of his walkthroughs just to, I remember I was stuck on a box or something like that. And I'm like, I'm going to watch his walkthrough. And I was even more lost for see when, <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, love you kid, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you know? And then I just, you know, found another walkthrough that's more my understanding, right? Like more. Yeah more basic, I guess you can say. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. So, you know, I, everything I do, like from Cisco to Microsoft to VMware, I try to put it in an order where it's easy to, you know, digest and yeah. and understand. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. <clears throat> we, um, yeah. I think we said we we're going to do 45 minutes because I'm 50 yeah. and it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll start, I, had a, I had a little granddad chat <laughs> before this live stream, just for an hour, just so I could power through. Um, we were going to talk about conferences and networking as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So, yeah. So <clears throat> I guess like uh, this year, like, do you plan on, if anyone, you know, obviously throw it in the chat as well, but like, Sam, do you plan on doing any, conferences you know network conferences and uh yeah so so for me um the way we're funding so infosec lives in the process of being registered as a not-for-profit here in the uk and in the us uh, for the last two years or for two years prior to last year i was personally funding the community and it got to the point where i just couldn't keep doing it anymore and i had to look at ways of monetizing it so first one was the YouTube channel interviewing CISOs, which we monetized after about 12 months. And after speaking to lots of CISOs, one of the things they mentioned that they were fed up with was the events they went to were very sales pitched focused. And I'm talking about the events that are around all the conferences. So where I'm getting my money from, and this is the point I'm getting to is vendors for sponsoring events. So for me, conferences are the richest fertile hunting ground for new business. So the answer is an absolute yes. I'm hosting a leadership event for Bug Crowd at RSA in May. I'm probably going to come over and see you for B-Sides Tampa. I went last year and it was awesome. Um, and my wife's desperate to come to Tampa. So probably going to come over there in April. Then I'm Gartner National Harbor doing another event with 
Bug Crown in June. Then it's Black Hat, I mm-hmm. think, in the summer. <clears throat> then we've got Infosec Europe here in the UK. I think I'm off to Australia in November to oh, host damn. an event. So yeah, um, I I think people moan about conferences. They moan about the vendor halls, and I get why they moan about it. I think the whole thing is a bit broken, but there is no better place to build relationships, meet people, and reaffirm relationships, and meet people in the flesh who you've been talking to online. Mm-hmm. And there's it's changed. It's <clears throat> honestly changed my life. My first ever conference, and I've got to thank a company for this because I was doing a six month contract back in 2022 for a penetration testing firm here in the UK. I was their global head of something, business innovation, I think it was. And the founder, Lewis, took me to my first RSA conference. And the other reason for going, for those who haven't before, I went over there, I'm looking for my rucksack. I don't know why, I don't need to show you it. I went over there with one rucksack, no checked in baggage. And I had to buy another suitcase when I was there because I had 37 free (laughs) t-shirts. 22 pairs of socks, <laughs> more stickers and key rings and crap than you can ever imagine. So yeah, there's there's lots of reasons for going to a conference. Is it to look at the vendor tools or go to the talks? Not for me. Um, <laughs> what about yeah, you, Pat? I, I actually got this uh, MSP 360 and this cool uh, IT guy t-shirt. A lot of the t-shirts I actually wear, I got it from I'm not. I'm not running away, but I had, um, this is someone I met at a conference and they sent me through this came through yesterday. I got a selection of water bottles, um, some chocolate bars, <laughs> some free pens. No idea what they are. And I don't know if these are matches or if they are why it says wildflowers on them. But, you know, <laughs> this is the kind of joy you get from attending conferences, folks. If you're not going, you're missing out. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, uh, Eric's Eric's made a... Asked a good question there. Yeah. Do you think conferences are good places for job seekers or primarily for networking? I think it's good for both. Both. Um, yeah. The reason being, um, it was like four years ago, three years ago. <clears throat> no, I don't know. Actually. Yeah. Have one. Sugar up before bed. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and it's I remember. Chocolate. That's fine. Y- yeah, yeah. That's better. Yeah. And uh, I remember going to a conference about four or five years ago. And it was like a Microsoft conference. And uh, I remember I I just, was it? I had just renewed my MCT, Microsoft Certified Trainer. And, you know, just, I had my full-time job. And someone asked me, this is when I started training, like asked me if I wanted to train back then. It was called the MCITP Enterprise Admin. And just train Microsoft systems and stuff like that. I was like, whoa, like, I don't think I could do that. Like. And I ended up doing it. They, they they sponsored my MCT because the way you get your MCT, I don't know how it is now. I let mine expire. But you would have to teach a course. You get you, Microsoft, you submit it to Microsoft. They review it. And then you have to train with a Microsoft trainer and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> the moral of the story, like I, I got a little side gig out of that. Uh, ever since, you know, ever since, I haven't really needed to seek jobs Um you know, at conferences, but it's definitely like I've networked with folks. I've met a lot of people at DEF CON last year, uh, you know, B-Side Orlando and just other, you know, I mean, lo- I've, I've seen people local like events. last year in London, I think it was in <clears throat> Europe and Black Hat. Mm-hmm. I know three people who got jobs from going to those conferences and walking around and speaking to the vendors. And for anyone who hasn't been to a conference before what we've been doing as a community at infosec live is we've been meeting up just before the conference you don't have to go in on your own so there's like a group of 10 15 of us will meet up outside have a coffee and then we'll go in because it can be quite overwhelming i mean rsa what 35 40 000 people it's like craziness that place. yeah yeah it really is yeah i remember so I we're going again, to get back, back to the community strength in numbers mm-hmm you know, arrange, <clears throat> arrange to meet some people to go in with, and it, it makes the situation a lot more bearable. And Wesley's made a comment. Um, I don't know if Eric can see me, but I believe meeting people in person adds more to your relationships with others. It's harder to get any other way. I, I mean, I'm 50 this year. I'm a great believer in the importance of face-to-face contact. Mm-hmm. And whilst <clears throat> this is amazing, and I've made, I, I suppose, cards on the table 
five years ago, I used to think people who had friends online were a bit weird. Um, <laughs> I can honestly say in the last three years, I've made more genuine friendships with people around the world than I have in the previous 47. Yeah. Being online. Yeah, but insane. <laughs> it, it only firms up that when you meet people face to face, it just solidifies that relationship even more. Exactly. And I, I, I can't agree more. And I'll, we'll wrap up now. It's like, I never played video games. You know, I, ne I never played a video game in my life, really. And I had friends that would be playing fucking Counter-Strike, Call of Duty and talking on a headset and nerding out. And I'm like, that shit is fucking weird as hell. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? You fucking weirdo. Like, you don't even know these people. And this was about like five years ago, like just before I started my YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, like, this is interesting because now I'm talking to strangers and I'm fucking inviting strangers to my house. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm the fucking, I'm, but I'm strapped up. So you try to fuck around. I got guns in every room, but you know, like fuck around and find out. But that's how we are in the US, right? Fucking wow, wow, wow. Not to stay at Pat's house. <laughs> time, it's, it's funny you should say that though. I, I stayed, um with a friend of mine who I met online for the first time a year and a half ago, <laughs> Steve in Tampa. And one of the first things he did was show me the gun cabinet and teach me the rules of gun safety, which for someone who lives in the UK, where we're not, I say that we're not allowed guns. I live on a, on a shooting estate. So every, every morning outside my door, I've got farmers with guns, but shotguns riding past a little bit different though. To yeah. Lock. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, <laughs> And you know, obviously, you came to Florida. Florida's a you know Republican state, so you're not going to take their guns away. Well, but, Texas, uh, Texas, I felt was more um, don't take our guns away. Than, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and over, over there, it's open carry. Arizona is open mm. carry too. That's where I thought it was a little because when I went to Arizona last year, was it last year, two years ago, whatever. When it, and like I was at the supermarket, and you just see random people just like with their gun, and I'm like, that's a little over the top you know i always conceal mine but it's like eh, i guess whatever floats their boat even if it even if florida ever becomes an open carry state i don't think i would ever open carry you it know. takes away the element of fun and surprise i would argue doesn't it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly uh, Forty thousand people i would most definitely need friends to go with yeah definitely yeah. definitely and it is i think i think rsa for people who don't like crowds can be a bit much and where my mental headspace was the first time I went, you know, I was still recovering from a pretty bad period in my life. I mean, I went mm -hmm. through six months where I didn't even want to go to a supermarket. Mm -hmm. So going to RSA was, um, I think we call it a baptism of fire, isn't it? Yeah. But I did get to sit in a DeLorean, you know. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty tight. It just made it all better, didn't it? Exactly. All right, so we'll wrap up. You know, I know obviously I want to be kind of your time because it's one in the morning over there. I want to say thank you so much. And uh, if anyone, obviously, if you guys don't know Simon, just go to his uh, channel, InfoSec Live, and obviously subscribe, show some love, join his communities. I think, however. I think I'm three away from 9,000 subscribers. So if you would jump in and subscribe, yeah, I'll send you a chocolate bar in the post <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. 9,000. That's a lot of people, man. I, well, not how many have you got? 60, 70 loads you've got on yours? Oh, almost almost 70, almost yeah. 70,000. That's amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. But you talk about stuff that's interesting and relevant. I don't actually know what I'm talking about, but I get guests on who do. So I suppose there should be some sort of disparity in the numbers, right? Yeah. Not that I'm saying don't subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm just saying don't expect to learn anything from me on my channel. It's the guests that you learn from. Just to cover that off before anyone's disappointed when they come across. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I think I think every channel has its value. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. sometimes even if I want to decompress, like I'm subscribed to like reactors, you know, they, and it's like no brainers. Like there's a reactor I, I love, uh, No Life Shack. You know, he has like 4 million subscribers. He's super entertaining. You just fucking watch him. He reacts to a, a rap video. And he just makes fun and breaks down the bars or breaks down like the lyrics. And he and basically he has... does does what we did when we were all kids sitting around, like hanging yeah. around in that warehouse or wherever it was we were sitting as teenagers. Exactly. It's just someone streaming that now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so everyone has their value, no matter, you know, everyone's going to learn something like. So, you know, most definitely go subscribe. And any last any last words that you want to say? before we let you go um i think we I mean, we've got we've got quite deeper 
points with regards to what's important in life. And for me, the biggest lesson I learned, and I learned it the hard way, was to follow your passion, not the money. Mm -hmm. So that's the advice that I try to give everyone. And I think if we can all try and be a little bit kinder to each other, a little bit more understanding, back to what Pat was saying earlier, Mm -hmm. about when you see people, if you get someone being aggressive on the road or you, you don't know what sort of day they've had and you don't know what, you know, if in the US, what fucking great gun they're carrying under their jacket either. So mm -hmm. be nice to people is my final comment. It works wonders for your mental health. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree. And like I said, I had that aggression, you know, when I first came down to Florida, you know, I, I, I looked different than, you, you know, like the typical... I skateboarded. Those big guns you're getting. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Come on, show us those guns. <laughs> I, those things, those things are little little flies. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah but it, um, I'm, I'm, let me just clear up why I've said that. So I mentioned to Pat before we started that I'd noticed on his thumbnails that his guns were getting bigger every week. So he must have been in the gym, which he confirmed. So, um, and Wesley's just said the world is a rough and dark place and we can always use more kindness. Yeah, I think. Absolutely. The one thing I didn't say is is the technical term. The world's fucked at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and we can all do something to change that by just small little actions. I think. Yep. Yep. So Simon, when I see you, we have to arm wrestle. So oh, I better get to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm doomed. <laughs> Got to <touch laughs> if I hold mine. Up. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it so, Thank, and, thanks for having me man it's yeah, been fun yeah likewise likewise go get some sleep go get some rest and uh i'll be tuning into your next one and obviously tune into his if you have any uh interest in talking about CISOs and all the stuff that he he talks about and thank you so much and stay blessed have a thanks, good one everyone thanks for the chat as well everyone it's been a pleasure take care Cheers.